driving Ivan here and behind me the Porsche Boxster 986. This one a 2000 in Tiptronic. I was considering buying it in my last video and I've decided to take the plunge. So is it a used car bargain right now and will I be impressed? Let's find out. Well in terms of its looks it's hard really not to be impressed. It's just so clean looking. This rear three quarter is my favorite angle and it's reminiscent of James Dean's 550 Spider. Just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful roadster. And it's one of those rare convertibles that looks good top down or even with the top up. Every angle on the car just looks so good. It's such a pure design. We should be proud here in America because it was designed by an American. Check out the custom features like the clear side markers and the black wheels, the yellow Brembo brake pads, and uh, that's another thing that's really just so great about these early Porsche Boxsters is that you can customize them and make them your own. You can even make the amber lights right here if you want to. You can make those clear as well. Maybe I'll do that later. But to me, even 20 years on, the styling is absolutely timeless. It's just gorgeous from every angle and uh, just one of those quintessential automotive shapes. The interior is pretty timeless and definitely Porsche through and through. You gotta love these dual roll bars there and uh, it's reminiscent of the 911 with the Formula One start over here and the gauge cluster a bit. There's a couple less gauges here just to tack speedometer and also temperature gauge and gas and also for the Tiptronic to let you know what gear you're in. But if you're familiar with the 996-911 then this will definitely look similar to you. Same seats, nice side bolstering that holds you in. They are heated which you can control here and there's the other windows there, some storage there. There's the five-speed automatic Tiptronic that you can of course shift on the steering wheel, the same light control and the same radio and also your cooling system, CDs down there and a bit of storage there that you could lock which is nice and also these two sliding compartments here that you can lock and then in the doors there's some storage but <laughs> it's got the same problem as the first generation 996-911 and that's that there's really no glove box. You get this silly little tray underneath, but you'll have to go a couple of years later where they refine the interior slightly if you want to get the glove box and a cup holder. Still though, a simple and sporty interior that's got eh, the smallest bit of luxury, which was kind of luxurious back then, but nowadays seems a bit dated in terms of its features, but still it is a very simple sports car driver oriented interior. So here's where you can pop the hood or the trunk and let's go ahead and do that and this is one of the cool things about the Boxster actually. A lot of storage back there, a surprising amount and uh, here are my disc golf discs. Check out my disc golf videos elsewhere on YouTube and uh, you'll learn the fine sport of disc golf. I shot a couple courses down here in Florida. So check those videos out elsewhere, but a great sport. You can play with your whole family and uh, you can certainly travel for a nice weekend getaway with that trunk and also check it out this one too. So in the front, of course, mid-engine, so no issues with storage. You've got very deep storage here. That's where the battery is, spare tire, and still deep storage for a couple weekend bags there. So you can travel a couple people for a nice weekend getaway road trip. The Porsche Boxster, mid-engined and uh, very, very versatile because of all that storage. If you'd like to know what options the Porsche was originally equipped with, just look under the hood here. And those are the codes for the options ordered with the car. Usually I'd show you the engine at this point, but since this is a Boxster and the engine is back here behind you, well, I can't do that. So I'll just tell you the specs. 2.7 liter boxer horizontally opposed flat six 
It makes 217 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 192 pound-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. Made it to a five-speed Tiptronic transmission, which you can shift like a regular automatic, of course, or up here on either side, plus or minus, and it indicates what's going on right here in front of you, so that's good. Zero to 60, 6 6.1 for the manual. In this case, since it's the Tiptronic, I would say high sixes, seven seconds. Porsche says about seven two, but they are always very, very, very conservative in their estimates. Fuel economy, 16 miles per gallon in the city, 23 on the highway. You can expect 18 overall. I think you can probably do a bit better. The gas tank holds 16.9 gallons. Top speed is 152 miles an hour for the Tiptronic, 155 for the manual. So the Porsche Boxster. I've been tooling around Florida in this one for a couple of days now since I bought it and uh, it's actually surprisingly good and usable as a sports car. I showed you the trunk, I showed you the hood trunk and uh, it's got a lot of storage space surprisingly and uh, it's been very reliable and it's gotten me everywhere I needed to go and carried everything I needed to carry. And the best part, of course, for me right now is cruising around Florida where it's super nice out and uh, no bad weather like you get at the holidays if you're living in the mid-Atlantic like I do. And uh, just top down all the time is really fun. Well, not top down all the time because I have it up now, but that's for this car review so that the audio is better and you guys can hear me. But otherwise, I've got the top down on this thing all the time. And with the heater cranked on full and with the heated seats going, well, it's actually very livable even when the temperature dips a little bit, maybe into the upper 50s or so. Oh, so much complaints here in Florida when it gets that cold. Ha. But that's the first surprise of the Boxster is that it's so usable and enjoyable as a vehicle. It's also eh, quick compared to your lay cars and your normal sedans. Say the Prius that I drive all the time because, uh, well, I'm a realtor and uh, I need something respectable to drive. If you wanna know the differences between owning a Porsche and a Prius or how to choose, I actually have a video called Porsche or Prius. Check it out elsewhere on YouTube. But this exact example is a 2000 Boxster Tiptronic. So it's not an S, the S has more power. Check out my review elsewhere for the review of the S, Boxster S that is, a newer version, the 987. But this 986 Porsche Boxster, I think is the perfect combination of fun in this case, I needed a Tiptronic, more on that in a second, and also convertible, and also sports car, and also, as an added bonus, Porsche. That badge means a lot. Just driving around this 20-year-old Porsche here in Florida, you get a lot of looks, and people respect this car. It doesn't matter what they're in. If they're in a Shelby, Mustang, well, they try to pass you really fast. That's already happened maybe a Corvette. There's of course a natural rivalry between Porsche and Chevy Corvette, but this car has a presence. It has a cool shape. I think it looks cooler than the newer examples because it's more reminiscent of that classic James Dean 550 Spider look. A beautiful design, as I said earlier, designed by an American. That's a great thing. Decent fuel economy. You do have to put premium in it. Well, 91 octane anyway, almost premium. You could probably combine the low and the high if you really wanted to save a little bit of money. But you really should put good gas in these. There are some rattles. The automatic top in this one doesn't work. It's got the 1117 code, which is for an oxygen sensor, which I think is actually a engine temperature sort of sensor or something like that. So another good thing is if you have a code reader, 
you can go ahead and figure out which codes you have and on Renlist or any of these great Porsche online sites, you can easily find out what's wrong if you get one of these codes. Before I bought it, there was a code for, I think, cylinder number six, so I made sure that that was fixed and just a couple other things before I bought the car. But I got a very square deal on this car and uh, driving it around Florida is a dream. I'll ship it back up home and then I will have a nice usable sports car classic that's extremely, extremely affordable to my eyes. Definitely a used car bargain and uh, I will enjoy driving it around at home as well. But there's something about having a convertible in Florida that's really, really nice, especially during holiday time of year. It's very strange seeing Christmas lights everywhere and uh, it being so warm outside. I can learn to live with this. And I can definitely learn to live with this Boxster. Lots of fun. Speaking of lots of fun, let's see how it quickly gets us to 60. for a Tiptronic. You can definitely rev it high with the Tiptronic and it sounds great. It's definitely a cool sensation too with the engine behind you. Definitely different than the Porsche 911 which of course I love. Check out my reviews of my 996 and why I bought a 996 also elsewhere on YouTube. I drove the Tiptronic, I drove the six-speed manual, I drove the Carrera 2, Carrera 4. So check out those videos if you're looking to buy a 911. But uh, this Boxster, one of the appealing things about it is it's cheaper to get into than the 911. It's a bargain Porsche. You can also check out my reviews of my 82 Targa and my 928 five-speed as well. Plus the 928 automatic I used to have back in the day. Very similar view, of course, because it's the same view from the 996, but you get that classic Porsche headlights view over the front, and I love that. Checking out the night look on the Boxster, and, uh, well, it's pretty sedate. Just some kind of amber lights here to light up the features, but uh, the gauge cluster looks pretty cool. A little too much red down there. The warning lights there. This one uh, looks like it's for the spoiler over there on the left and then on the right. Yeah, the top is actually uh, not automatic at this time. It's a manual top because it's disconnected. I was told it should work if hooked up, but um, I'm sure it was disconnected for a reason. So Now this uh, is a 1117 code, which is the... It says oxygen, some sort of oxygen sensor. But it's a engine coolant something sensor basically so I knew about that and it was canceled out I actually came back but uh, the other codes that I had before I bought the car were uh, for the number six spark plug I believe and uh, so I knew what I was getting into no problems there and uh, I will go ahead and fix that at some point soon when I get the car home how does it handle right so you can definitely have fun in this car you can definitely toss it around a bit and that's just something I love after all that's why you want a sports car right yes you want to be able to toss it around and just have a little bit of fun with it and you can certainly do it in the Boxster the handling is really super crisp and predictable. It was raining the other night when I picked up the Boxster and I was just able to immediately make this car dance. It loses grip pretty easily in terms of modern cars because modern cars don't lose grip at all. And that's what's charming about this 20-year-old Boxster. You can make it dance a bit. You can lose traction at reasonable speeds and that makes for a fun car. It really danced in the rain and it was very predictable, very even, certainly neutral handling. It's a very well balanced car and really for the money to get a mid-engine convertible 
sports car in America, <laughs> there's really not much out there. Maybe a Toyota MR2 Spider, and that's about it. Now, a lot of you are going to say, oh, the Tiptronic, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Starting at about 2012, say my Fiat 500C that used to be Charlie Sheen's. Look for my review of that one soon, but I've reviewed every Fiat 500. And like I said, I own that Fiat 500C. That's an automatic also, because like this one, I'm going to have some ladies driving it, and uh, they prefer to drive an automatic transmission. Plus, remember, I'm driving Ivan. I have a heck of a lot of cars. If you want to know what I drive, then check it out elsewhere on YouTube. What does Drive and Ivan drive? Plus, I've bought five cars down here, counting this Porsche Boxster. Look for those reviews soon. Some pretty cool cars I've gotten down here in Florida. But really, this one just fit a niche that I needed to be fit, and I'm just thrilled with it. The automatic transmission, as I was saying, that you can shift, the shiftable automatic, well, it got worse fuel economy than the manual and uh, it certainly wasn't as quick. And that's the case with that Fiat 500Z, and it's the case with this Porsche too. The handling is pretty much the same, but the speed, well, it's a little slower than its manual brother. But still, again, people buy cars for a reason, and I really wanted the automatic in this case. Nowadays, it's really silly to make the argument about automatic versus manual. I have a video on that elsewhere on YouTube. Check it out. It's called Auto versus Manual or something. Just Google that and drive an Ivan. And I use a modern Miata to talk about it. And really, cars these days are so good and the manual transmission is so rare because there's really no point. Yes, a long time ago, cars like the Porsche 928, manual versus automatic, there's no comparison. To me, the manual is so much better. But in newer cars, well, there's really no point in having a manual transmission anymore with technology. You can't shift as fast as a Formula One driver can, and even a Formula One driver can't shift as fast as these great computer controlled transmissions these days. But anyway, Tiptronic or manual, the Porsche Boxster is, I think, one of the best all around roadster sports cars out there for the money. So, what are the known problems with the Porsche 986? Well, you do have that IMS issue, which is also in the Porsche 996, but basically with the two and a half liters, they used the double row, and that's from 98 and 99, and then 2000 here, they went to a single row, and well, they've had more problems with those. 1% is the actual failure rate of the 2.5 liter and the 2.7 liter here, up to 8%, so still not a large amount. And that can be taken care of for probably a couple grand. So certainly a big deal. And if you're looking for a cheap Porsche, well, you want to make sure that's been done. I bought this one here and I wasn't too sure about it, but I did my research and thankfully I found out from an old ad about this car that yes, it has had the IMS done. 9,000 miles ago and lots of maintenance too back then so this is a good car it's been dogged out a little bit it's been customized but really fits the needs of what I want now what should you pay for a Porsche Boxster well you can pick up a runner probably as low as like four thousand dollars maybe it's gonna be a dog certainly but um, depending on mileage under a hundred thousand miles low cream puff mileage things like that those of course add value but I would say just get the one you want, get the color you want, and spend the amount of money you want. Like they say with Porsches, buy the most expensive one you can afford, the nicest one you can afford. But you can expect to pay about five to really about $15,000 for a 986 cream puff these days. And a great car it will be. There's also the RMS, the rear main seal, and on these Porsche 986 as well, What's that going to do if the rear main seal is leaking? It's going to make you use more oil. It's not a really, really horrible situation if you just keep oil in it. And you should actually, for the IMS, you should actually drive these cars hard because when you do, it gets the oil all around the engine and 
cars that have been driven hard, well, the IMS fails a lot less than those that have been driven around like your grandmom is driving it. So it's a Porsche. Drive it. Driving with the top down and there's a little sprinkle going on, but I assure you, I don't feel it at all. No wind buffing with the optional piece of plastic behind me and absolutely no rain on me, even though I can feel it when I put my hands up. Nice. Top down, I've got the cruise control set for about nine miles an hour over the speed limit, and that's about 80 miles an hour here in Florida. Notice the windows are, well, if they were up, it would be a little more quiet, but because the automatic top doesn't work and the sensor tells the car that there's something up, it doesn't let the windows close all the way. So in that case, that's why we have a little bit more wind noise, even with the uh, optional plexiglass feature behind me. But still pretty quiet for 80 miles an hour on the highway, I think. You can carry on a conversation, certainly. Driving the box around has really given me time to think and contemplate about really the place of great used cars like this Porsche Boxster. These days, McLarens can feel like Ferraris and Lamborghinis can feel like Aston Martins, and they pretty much feel like they are driving you. But Porsches have always been built for driving, and Porsches are still fun to drive and full of personality and have a solid build quality that makes it the perfect used car. While old 911s can bite you if you mishandle them, they are well worth it in many ways, especially in terms of the air-cooled sound, steering feedback, and steering feel. But they are pricey. The Boxster is sorted, reliable, and easy to drive quickly, plus the looks. I've driven the modern Porsches on the track. Just Google Drive and Ivan and Porsche 911, 991, and you'll find my modern reviews of those. Even the McCann and the Panamera and the Cayenne. Yes, I've driven those on the track. The Cayman GTS, I drove in an autocross format. Check out those reviews elsewhere on YouTube. But basically, a modern car is driving you. And the problem is with an Aston Martin or a Ferrari or a McLaren, they pretty much feel the same because there's so much speed. And when you go that fast, the speed feels the same. That's not to say that Ferraris aren't great cars and have a heck of a ton of personality. I love Ferraris, don't get me wrong. I love Aston Martins. McLarens, Lamborghinis. Check out my interview with Valentino Balboni at the Lamborghini factory before the museum even opened back in 1999. I've toured the Ferrari factory before. I love these cars. But we're talking about the real world and we're talking about getting yourself a car that you can drive and enjoy and you can get to the limit without being on the racetrack. And that's why I think cars like this Porsche Boxster, especially the 986, is such a used car bargain these days. The steering feedback in the 911, yes, it's better. You can run over a coin and know exactly the type of coin you ran over. Incredible steering, incredible sound of that air-cooled engine behind you. I love classic Porsches, but in terms of older Porsches, this one is an incredible bargain because it's a lot cheaper than going out and buying. Even a 996, a 996 is gonna run you pretty much three times at least what you pay to get into a 986 Boxster and you can really use this car. It's just a great all-around mid-engine, I think exotic sports car that's also a convertible so it really is the best of all worlds. Still has great steering, still has that wonderful solid Porsche build. This is after all a Porsche Porsches are built and tested in Germany where it's cold, where they have to be reliable. And when you close the door of this Porsche Boxster, it feels solid. Everything feels solid in these cars. Yeah, they've got their little issues like any old car will, but you don't get the feeling it's going to leave you on the side of the road. You can drive the heck out of it. You can drive it to a track day and then drive it home too. It's really just a great all-around sports car and in this case with the Tiptronic it's a car that ladies can drive if they don't know how to drive stick and still have a great time 
and you're still going to get plenty of admiring looks with this 986 Boxster. Even here in Florida where the cars are pretty incredible and the best thing about it to me is that the looks are just reminiscent of that beautiful little bastard James Dean's 550 Spider. So there you have it. This Porsche 986 Boxster Tiptronic is an incredible used car bargain. I've enjoyed the heck out of it driving it around Florida with the top down pretty much all the time and there you have it. I am impressed and you should go out and get yourself a Porsche Boxster too. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Check out all my other car videos. Just Google Drive and Ivan and your favorite car. Just check out my disc golf videos as well. My music videos, a literal video for Chris Isaac's Wicked Game. And thanks for watching. I'm driving Ivan.